All right. So let's start uh, the new topic, which will be angina, which is a characteristic of very typical kind of chest pain due to decrease in the oxygen supply. Angina in itself is not a disease. It's a symptom of a disease. Depending on the types of occlusion or the you know percentage of the occlusion of the coronaries or different types of vasospasm, we have three types of angina. So these three types of angina that we have will be subdivided into stable angina, unstable angina, stable angina, unstable and other one is known as your variant angina. Variant angina guys, it is also known as your Prince metal angina. Some places you will also be finding the term known as your vasospastic angina. So that is the same thing. Now what happens in the stable angina usually there is around 70% coronary occlusion. Around 70% coronary occlusion will be there. And of course, if there is a coronary occlusion, there will be decrease in the oxygen supply, decrease in the oxygen supply to the tissues, wherever there is occlusion, distal to those occlusion, the oxygen supply will be reduced. Always remember, okay. And whenever there is decrease in oxy oxygen supply, the tissue will undergo hypoxia and they will be manifesting with the pain. In unstable angina, I will be talking in detail about stable again on the next slide. In unstable angina, remember, the occlusion could be around 90% occlusion. Around 90% occlusion. Okay. Here, there is around 70% occlusion. So, patient will have pain usually on the exertion. But in this condition, that is uh, unstable angina here, the pain is going to be there even on rest. Pain is there even on rest. In a variant on the Prince metal angina, remember, there can be pain. I mean, there will be pain, of course, but there can be atheromatous plague. There may not be atheromatous plague, right? So, there will be vasospasm, coronary vasospasm that is associated with or without atheromatous plague. Atheromatous plague may be there, atheromatous plague may not, be, may not be there. So, if you look at the coronaries in a variant angina, this is going to be the coronaries in the variant, a normal coronary. Uh, sorry, in a vasospastic angina, the coronaries will look in a normal scenario like this. There will be excessive alpha 1 activity, you know, alpha 1 mediated vasoconstriction. There may be vaso, there may be a plaque, there may not be plaque, it is not necessary. Okay. In here also, because of the vasospasm, the oxygen supply to the tissues will be compromised and the, the tissue will undergo hypoxia and there will be pain. Now, let me give you a little detailed uh, analysis here of the stable angina. In the stable angina, let us understand, the coronaries as I told you will be occluded around 90% of the coronaries are going, uh, sorry, 70% of the coronaries are going to be occluded. The other coronaries and these are the tissues, the distal tissue that is lying distal to the coronaries. And as I told you, that is around 70% of these coronaries are actually occluded. You can easily understand if the atheromatous plague is going to block the coronaries. <coughs> In this case scenario, the oxygen supply initially will def will be compromised. There will be less oxygen supply. Tissue will undergo hypoxia. Because the tissue is undergoing hypoxia, if there is tissue is under, if the tissue is undergoing hypoxia, this tissue will start to release a factor known as your hypoxia inducing factor. They will be releasing what? Hypoxia inducing factor. Because of this release of hypoxia inducing factor their coronaries will actually get a little dilated. So, this 70% occlusion, there was only 30% availability. Now, if there is dilatation, maybe this can increase from 30% to 40%, 50%, 60%, depends. Whatever coronaries that has dilated, 
Now these are enough to supply the oxygen in the resting scenario. You and me, when we are going to walk on a treadmill, a normal person, you and me, I mean, we are talking about the normal one. If a normal person go and walk on a treadmill or walking a few flights of stairs, what will happen actually? Our oxygen demand will also increase. And in that response, in response to excessive oxygen demand, if the coronaries are getting dilated, that's a normal response, right? So if there is increase in oxygen demand, the coronaries will dilate in a normal scenario and once the demand will subside the coronaries will come back to its normal caliber but in this scenario the coronaries are dilated even in the resting phase <clears throat> in the resting phase also the coronaries are actually dilated now if this person goes for a morning walk or if he is going to run on a treadmill Nowadays, you must have heard about a lot of news about people walking on a treadmill. What will happen if there is increase in the oxygen demand? This can be due to exercise. This can be due to stress. Can be emotional stress. This can be due to a full meal as well. Even a meal, a you know, heavy meal. Full meal or heavy meal. Or in any way, if the oxygen demand is going to get increased, what will happen? Do you think these coronaries will further get dilated? The coronaries are already dilated. But these coronaries will not get dilated. And because of this, these exercise, stress, heavy meal will be again inducing hypoxia in the tissues. And that can present with the pain. Right? So there is a pain. This pain is usually seen on the exertion. Was the pain... Also there when the person was resting, no. Because in the resting scenario, there is a compensatory mechanism. Already the coronaries are little dilated. They are supplying the required oxygen that we have. But whenever there is increase in the oxygen demand, these coronaries uh, will not be able to compensate for this excessive demand. And the pain will be there on the exertion. But what will happen if this patient goes off for the resting? If the patient goes for the rest, what will happen? The oxygen uh, uh, demand will further reduce. So this pain is actually going to get relieved on the resting. This is a very specific, very typical kind of finding guys. Very typical, very specific finding where there is a pain on exertion and relieved upon rest. This classical finding that we have, it also made us to choose the name of stable angina as classical angina. They are classically presenting also known as your typical angina. Classical angina, typical angina. Because this pain is occurring due to effort. We can even call it as an effort angina. Right? Effort angina. Okay? So pain on exertion relieved upon rest. Very, very typical finding. That is why they are known as your typical angina. Okay? Very classical presentation. Pain on exertion relieved upon rest. And it is occurring due to effort. So multiple names has been given. So meaning is all same. Classical, typical, effort, all the meanings are same. Now looking at the... <coughs> Other one which is unstable in China, do remember unstable in China, it is coming under the umbrella of acute coronary syndrome. Now why is that it's coming under the umbrella of acute coronary syndrome? Because the plaque here is unstable, patient is also unstable. Why patient is unstable? If the patient will be resting at home, he will still be having pain. So neither the plaque is stable, nor the patient is stable. That's how I remember that in unstable, No one is stable, neither the plaque nor the patient. So let's see what happened in the unstable kind of angina. In the unstable kind of angina, as I told you, that there will be around 90% occlusion. So let's say this is one of the segment of the coronaries. <coughs> and the occlusion here would be around 90% or sometime more than that. 
because of this the oxygen supply will be markedly compromised to the dis distal tissues even if the coronaries try to release the hypoxia inducing factor they will not be able to do that much effective right you may you might be asking sir why not hypoxia inducing factor here yes it can release it will release but since the coronaries are already uh, you know occluded more than 90 percent even if the coronaries get dilated a bit they will not be able to compensate for that increased demand or in the normal scenario also whatever oxygen supply uh, is required it will not be able to compensate for that another thing that you should know in an unstable angina in an unstable angina there is a spontaneous rupture of this atheromatous plaque there is a spontaneous rupture of the atheromatous plaque and because of the spontaneous rupture of this atheromatous plaque they will be inviting or they will be attracting more and more platelets here they are going to attract more and more platelets and these platelets are going to cause progressive occlusion this progressive occlusion of platelets sometime it can cause 100% occlusion and this 100% occlusion remember can turn out to be again your mi myocardial infarction that is why i told you this will be coming under the umbrella of myocardial infarction imagine even a very small thrombi even if uh, no very small thrombi is coming this is small thrombi can cause 100% occlusion that is why unstable angina will be coming under the umbrella of variant uh, acute coronary syndrome remember so what did i tell you let me just pen it down here that there will be around 90 percent occlusion and there is a spontaneous rupture of right there is a spontaneous rupture of atheromatous plaque right this is spontaneous rupture of atheromatous plaque it will be causing platelet it will be causing platelet uh, platelet occlusion platelet mediated occlusion will be there it will attract more and more platelet it is going to attract more and more platelet and there will be progressive occlusion this occlusion in progressive manner this occlusion in the progressive manner will be causing progress uh, will be causing you know, more occlusion to the uh, coronaries and will further lead to you know uh, pain and uh, it can even turn out to be a case of mi so progressive occlusion if it is going out to be 100 percent it can turn out to be an mi okay so in this condition neither the patient is stable nor the plaque is stable so unstable angina it is usually treated as how it is usually treated as your um, mi if it is uns, uh, if there is non st elevation it will be treated as that if it is st elevation it will be treated as like st elevation mm -hmm.